We still remember the signs and the demands of the protesters here on Black Lives Matter Plaza when it was still 16th Street. They wanted police accountability reform. They wanted funding shifted from hiring more police officers to hiring mental health professionals. They wanted voting reform and they wanted economic changes. On a federal level, nearly all those pushes for change failed. But on a local level, advocates say they've seen some limited success. Melissa Covington of Upper Marlboro, Maryland wasn't into tea, but now it helps calm the flashbacks. I really thought that that would spark um, a change that as of today did not happen yet. We sat down with Covington and her three daughters, 12 year old Alani. There are still black people dying out there for not doing any, for basically not doing anything and police brutality is still going on. 16 year old Alyssa. It makes me upset that we still have to go through this after years of protesting and having to prove that our lives matter. And 22 year old Amina calling in from her new U.S. Army post. Like, I wish I can say things will eventually work, work itself out, but it's just, I don't, I don't, I just don't see it. Like I don't see no progress. The Covingtons protested on the streets of D.C. after the murder of George Floyd at the knee of a Minneapolis police officer. They were hoping their voices would be heard for change. Through 2020, there were multiple bills in Congress aiming to meet demands by many Black Lives Matter protesters to reform police use of force policies and oversight. Democrats came up with the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Republicans came up with the Justice Act. Both bills failed to pass, and both bill sponsors ignored our multiple attempts for an interview to explain how they would continue to press for change. This is a plaza named for your movement, but do you truly feel? Absolutely not. I've never felt like this was for us. I felt like it was some picture ops um, that quickly became a, a memory. We walked the length of Black Lives Matter Plaza with BLM DC organizer April Goggins for first time since the 2020 protests. She looks back beyond police reform towards changes to reverse centuries of economic oppression of racial groups with hope for a lasting grassroots movement. We've always tried actually <laughs> to get the government to be the entity that changes these things. Uh, but when we look, the change has actually always come from the bottom. Uh, it comes from the working class, poor folks, who make up the majority of the country. At the federal level, there was very little change. I mean, it could be argued none at all. At the state and local level, there was quite a bit of movement. I mean, first we saw a lot of banning of no-knock warrants. We saw an increasing in a focus on, say, implicit bias trainings. University of Maryland sociology professor Rashawn Ray worked to pass local legislation. In Virginia, there was quite a bit of movement. Similar to the Maryland Police Accountability Act, I testified in the state of Virginia on a series of things, banning no-knock warrants, thinking about um, an increasing level of oversight in the state of Virginia was big. Most parents dream of passing on a legacy to their children, but Melissa Covington worries that legacy may mean protesting alongside her daughters for years to come. I'm pessimistic. I don't see this going in our favor for a long time. I'm still sad that how I actually have to deal with, or I actually have to hear that, and I might have to deal with stuff, something like that myself in the future. I myself might be put in danger if my family is, if my future kids might be. When you think about what you're out there for, it means that people don't value your life as much as others. So to stand on that, I proudly have them stand with me. As for corporate America, well, there's been some progress. That's according to business consulting firm Deloitte. Fortune 500 companies added 24 black men and women to their board of director seats in the year after the 2020 protests. But at this rate, according to Deloitte, it's going to take another 52 years to get to 40% ethnic minority representation. Reporting for Black Lives Matter Plaza, Nathan Baca, WUSA 9.